The brain is in a black case without any smells, sights, no wind. It's just a, a senseless thing in a skull. And yet somehow it lives in a painted, smelly world <laughs> that is beautiful. Mixing up of the senses. Multi-perception. It's, it's complicated, it's wacky, it's crazy. The smashing together of multiple senses. Your senses blend together. Anesthetes have a special feature in their brains which makes it so that certain sensory experiences are cross-wired. So about 4% of the population has synesthesia. To perceiving something as something else, a sound as a color. You can maybe taste music or every letter or number that you see might have a specific color to go with it. And vanilla is blue. No, you laugh, but it's like it's like Cheerios getting pulled through space. What? Well, there's like a really light purple yeah. and dark red. I have blue in between them. <laughs> My Tuesday is lime green. Bagpipes are also green. It's sparkly and blue and it cascades like that. My brother and I, we, we've had conversations when we were discussing it and my brother, like for me, when I see a violin, it's like a yellow color and my brother, I don't remember what color he was, but he's always like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And Your typical like violin is like a, like a very yellowy. We'll compare it and sometimes we'll disagree like when we see cellos, I'm like a deep purple and he'll be like a pinkish color. Yeah, what I hear are instruments, mostly voices, uh, random noises. I translate that into colors and shapes in my head, and that's what I see. When I see blue voices, like someone that their voice is blue, I get really excited because I don't see blue very often. It's not like a common color for me to see, so when I see someone that has blue, it's just like, oh my gosh, you are awesome. <laughs> well, probably the most interesting uh, instrument there is is actually the bassoon, because um, it's like one of the few instruments that are green. It's a very, green is a very different color. It's like a, it's like almost like a frog croaking. It has like that croak with that sound. Uh, bagpipes are also green. When there's like different um, like accents on it, it'll sometimes show up as a different texture. When there's like high frequency, high pitch noises, I see white. And it really is like kind of getting blinded by a flashlight that's being pointed at your face. And in those cases, it's just, if it goes to like a console or something like that, like a classical console, I like have more depth of perception of like the music we played and then all the interactions. Because besides listening to it, that's only part of it. it is, when you're seeing all the interactions, it helps you understand the piece better. The piano is really cool to me. It's very like a lighter color, depending on what key you're in. The key kind of also depends. There's like the minor keys are slightly darker, and then the the more upbeat keys are lighter in color, and I usually see pinks and purples a lot, and they're pretty interesting, but sometimes I see reds, and it's really, really cool. If tomorrow I didn't have synesthesia, I mean, that would be weird, honestly. That would be like, like not, have, not like being able to see at all, really. It's like, I'm so used to this perspective that probably like a whole new one would be less like, I would describe synesthesia in general as um, mixing up of the senses, like things that people would typically see, um, you associate with another sense, such as like, you know, hearing, taste, or smell. For me, it's mostly like the way people talk or different languages. I do have like impressions or kind of like shapes of them somewhere in space. When I can associate, like, if I'm trying to remember a word, uh, like the meaning or spelling or pronunciation, and I'm just like repeating it over and over, just looking at the letters, then yeah, it takes me a long time because, you know, it's boring. But if, but if, when I try to associate it with a certain shape or a certain like feeling to the word, it's not just like letters, there's like a feeling behind it. Um, there's like a sh like a presence <laughs> behind the word, then it helps me remember a lot better. 
Like actually I'm taking German in college right now and the way I remember things is like I associate like um, the shape of the sound that goes with each word and how something is pronounced and how you say something in conversation rather than just like letters on a page. At the end of um, my senior year in high school as a salutatorian I had to give a speech and I was like well, how can I make this interesting and not just like a typical speech? And I was like, I know, I'll give it in five different languages. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started out in English. I don't remember the exact order, but I think I started in English, I went to Spanish, then I went to French, then I went to German, I ended in Chinese, and I had like one line in Finnish. And okay, it was actually, I think, six, but whatever. So yeah, that was really fun for me and really interesting. The Finnish language is very, is, cons is like very rat, it's like consisting of Cheerio shaped objects. It's kind of like getting, no you laugh, but it's like, it's like Cheerios getting pulled through space because it's like very round and it has like a very thick consistency. You know um, those, those yogurts that are like souffle, those like yogurts that are like whipped, it's like that consistency, but between each sentence it gets like divided, so it's like, if you can imagine like tubing kind of. Swedish, for example, I described before, kind of has the consistency of yogurt, and it's also very cubical, and it's like, it's like it's getting yanked along, like, like by a string. And um, Norwegian would be similar, except it's, instead of cubes, it's more like, um, tri it's more like triangular. Like the at the end of the cube, it slopes down. Also, like Australian accents, I would see the taper at the end of each of the OUs or AUs because they like that's like a distinguishing thing. But um. But it depends how different it is. It's not like accent per se, it's just like how different it is from English, I guess. Gut story synesthesia is when you taste something and there's a color to accompany it. And vanilla is blue. Milk chocolate would be pink. Um, red wine is um, usually black. Um, mangoes, um, they're either Orange or green, I don't really know. Audio tactile synesthesia is when is when you hear a sound or music or something and then you get a you get a feeling in your limbs or on your skin or something. It doesn't have to necessarily be like, oh, I feel fingertips on my palm. It could be feelings in your muscles, like this song makes me want to throw my arms in circles. The way that it helps me is that it's really easy to choreograph certain dance moves. I mean, I listen to a song and then I'm like, okay, this part makes me want to do this motion. How could I incorporate that into a dance routine? Uh, it can get distracting at times. Like, I don't know if I'm, if I'm trying to do homework and then I have music on. Well, I can't have music on when I'm doing homework because a song will come on and then I'm just like, I need to do certain movements right now. There's a specific type of synesthesia that you have certain days of the week, months of the year with, with a certain color. I mean, for example, my Mondays are always brown and anytime anybody says Monday or I think of Monday, it's always brown. And even if I see it in a different color text, like if it's blue or something, I'll still think Monday is brown. I don't actually physically see it like I see objects or I see my hands. Um, it's uh, it's all a perceptual field. Disadvantages for synesthesia, aside from not being believed or being suspected as high. All right, Mondays are orange. Saturdays are yellow. Wednesdays are dark green. Tuesday, I can't remember the days of the green out. Tuesdays are this weird um, pink, red, sunset color. Thursdays are red. Fridays are hot pink. I realized that I had synesthesia and that what I saw wasn't what everybody else saw about a year ago. And I was very surprised that that wasn't what everybody else saw. I just kind of thought, it was normal, nobody told me otherwise, but it doesn't usually come up in conversation. So numbers, like, it's, if you're starting at zero, zero is, like, there, and then they kind of, they're at various heights, but they just kind of go, but I can only see so many of them, so, like, but say, so you're thinking of, like, 150, I can't see 150 starting from zero, but starting at 150, it's, like, over there, but, so they're on either, so I'm, like, in the middle, there's a line from me, right? 
And so, as you move down the numbers, I just, like, they kind of slide. Does that make any sense? For advantages, is it, well, for having the number lines, when, you know, you're little and you, they gave you number lines to do math with, but then they took them away and said you can't use one. I have one. It's just there. So, it, it was helpful in elementary school. And, um, yeah, it's something interesting to talk about. Um, and I can't really think of any disadvantages for synesthesia at all. K is a bright uh, orangey yellow. Uh, skunk smell is also yellow, um, but more of a greenish yellow. Um, it's very iridescent in texture as well. Uh, it actually looks like the same smell as burnt bagels. It looks exactly the same as the skunk smell. So I have um, several types of synesthesia. Uh, mostly uh, they're linked to uh, visual senses in the sense that everything I hear, smell, taste, and touch has a visual uh, perception to go along with it. Um, so synesthesia has always been um, very apparent in my life. However, that being said, I never realized there was, it was anything out of the ordinary uh, until I was about 14. So what's really interesting about synesthesia is that Basically, it works the same for every synesthete, however, specifically the things that they are perceiving is going to vary uh, depending on the individual. So, I might always think trumpet sounds orange, and another synesthete might always think it sounds blue. And we'll each always think that, it won't change, that's what makes synesthesia so uh, interesting, is it's completely consistent for the person, but not um, amongst people. I hate listening to the color of my own voice. I don't notice it so much when I'm just talking, but if I hear a video recording of it, I just cringe because it's this obnoxious, really bright hot pink, uh, and I think it's terrible. I'd say my favorite perception, so to speak, would be uh, Cat Stevens' voice because it's uh, blue and green and purple, and it's, it's just beautiful to look at visually, but it's also um, I have audio tactile synesthesia and whenever I hear Cat Stevens sing or, or speak, it's pretty much any element of his voice. There's also uh, this sensation that goes along with it, so his voice kind of feels like really intense wind. There's no memorization required at all with synesthesia. Um, it's completely automatic, involuntary, and consistent. So if you ask a synesthete 60 years from now what color something was perceived as, they'll instantly say the same thing. It's, there's no memory, it's all automatic triggers. There's some theories that um, support the fact that maybe everyone had synesthesia uh, at some point. Uh, meaning that a couple months into infancy they lost it and they had developed it in utero. Um, now that being said, that would mean that the first thing that you ever saw was the sound of your mother's heartbeat. And I think that is beautiful. Why, yes, I have. Honey, not your life, but I can try to make a move. I won't think twice. You can have my kid. Play guitar, bass, piano, drums, harmonica. Um, I sing. Play the mandolin. Grab your umbrella, baby, cause it's raining hard like you never seen. As a musician, I think I have a little bit of a better idea of what makes certain moods for me. Although that might necess not necessarily reflect everyone else's perceptions of them, so. Different electric guitar tones are really different colors and textures and they actually make shapes instead of just, some of them actually make shapes instead of just fields. They cut through, which is cool. And trumpets do the same thing. Certain tones are painful and they're like, shooting pain in this area, then the more intense they are, the closer to my temples they get. That's usually when there's no vibrato on a note, and it just keeps going. Uh, Elliot Smith's Son of Sam is really... It's three different fields of three different shades of purple, 
and they weave in and out and back and forth together. But it's very multi-dimensional. I have um, color graphene synesthesia, which means that my symbols, mostly numbers and letters, have colors inherently in them. Another thing that may not seem like crossing of the senses so much that I do have is my number line is spatially arranged in a fixed way so that when I think about numbers or when I do math in my head, there are specific places in the environment that I, I go to in my head when I think about them. And my months are in a circle, in a wheel. And when I think today is, you know, March 3rd, it goes to that part in the wheel. And if I imagine, no, today is January 10th, my birthday, it goes to January 10th. I first realized I had synesthesia. Well, most people who have synesthesia, I think, go through something similar. I was on the internet, and I was looking up some article, and I discovered, quite accidentally, an article about synesthesia, and it was describing how this boy was laughing to his dad, who was, you know, mystified. And the boy was like, isn't it funny how when you put an, a line on a P, you can turn it red? And I was like, yeah, that is funny, you know? And then, I, and then it was describing how that, not everybody had that. And for me, it wasn't like, oh, I have something. It was, oh, nobody else has. Okay, so A is red, B is brown, C is yellow, D is black, E is either green or gray, depending on if it's a schwa sound in the word, uh, or if it's an actual E sound. F is brown, again, but a different color. G is dark green, K is salmon, L is a light teal, M is orange, and is a different color orange, grayer. O is white, P is orange, Q is sort of like a grayish purple, R is red, S is white, T is black, U is purpley maroonish, light pink, hard to explain. V is purple, dark purple. W is teal, like your dress. Um, w, X, Y, Z. X is either black or dark, dark green. It's really, I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> and then Y is yellow and Z is dark greenish gray. Zero, like O, is white. But circles, in general, are not. My shapes have different colors, it's weird. So, zero is white. One is McDonald's beige. I don't explain it. Two is blue, three is either salmon or yellow, but it's kind of in between, it's like a peach, it's really hard to explain. Four is red, five is orange, six is black, seven is green, eight is purple, nine is yellow, and ten is one and zero. However, the teens, the, the zero is not really white so much as it is black with white around it. It's really hard to use exact words because whenever I do it sort of sounds like I'm telling a half lie because it's... Nothing can really pin down the exact colors that I see. It's almost like when I try to type out my alphabet using colors on uh, Microsoft Word, it doesn't look quite right and it really frustrates me because I can't get it quite right. But um, the best way I can explain it is with numbers, my colors are clear, solid, and separate. So when I went about trying to memorize digits of pi, one of the things that helped me besides repeating it over and over <laughs> was the different color combinations. So right now I have about 48 in my long-term memory, and I didn't have to try that hard because the colors, when I know when I get a digit wrong because it's like beep, like a random glaring error in the chain. But um, with, with words it's different and confusing because the letters kind of mix together. So like the word the, really common word, is not T-H-E. Even though I might, my alphabet has colors, the words, when, especially when I'm reading fast, the colors are just everywhere. So some words have colors that are really unpredictable from the composition of their letters. Especially words regarding months, weeks, and concepts, such as the, the word blue is blue. <laughs> Not all of the letters are blue. The, the letters are brown, light blue, purple, and like greenish gray. But the word blue is blue, just the way it is. So, and the word June is light green, even though none of the letters are green. So go figure. Um, but right here what I have is, I started this project a little while ago, but my name's Kathy with a K, and back when I still spelled it mostly with a K, not just on legal documents, I decided to make this. So I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's pinkish, red, orange, black, and yellow, which is really the ugliest combination you can imagine. And even, for some reason, the synesthesia that I couldn't control ended up giving me a name that I didn't like to look at. But I didn't really mind it, because it was my name. But then I thought about the possibility of changing it and some alternatives. I didn't like using it with a C either, but with a Q, like I said, the c words aren't just the composition of their letters. It's, it's more like a mix. So even though these colors look drastically different from each other, if you look one by one, they're not that different, but the overall 
color difference just by changing one letter is pretty dramatic. So Q-A-T-H-Y and K-A-T-H-Y have a sort of distinctly different emotion to them, not just the colors. I think that what runs in families is not so much the type of synesthesia as it is the probability that you will get some form of synesthesia, because if synesthesia is at its most basic cross-wiring, then there may just be a tendency to have more cross-wiring cross -wiring than other people. And I know that in my family, the type of synesthesia that's prevalent is not necessarily all the same. Uh, me and my dad and my grandma, recently I found out, all seem to have the number line and calendar in our head that spins. With my dad, he's in a wheelie chair and he spins around and looks. With me, it's a wheel in front of me, but we all seem to have something to do with timelines, spatial, cross wiring with numbers. I would say that synesthesia is not all that peculiar when it comes to crazy things that the brain can do and be in the human uh, species. But I would think that synesthesia is special because it teaches us a lot about what sensory experience is real and what is an illusion. And when it comes down to it, it turns out that we recreate reality. We're not actually sensing pure reality and our senses reconstruct that whenever we think about the world, whenever we look at the world. One of the biggest surprises and one of my favorite things to learn about psychology is that dreaming reality is not that different from waking reality. In that, even though it seems clear that a dream is something, a product of your brain, that is very detached from what's actually going on. You're actually in your bed, lying with your eyes shut. Um, if you think about it, the brain is in a black case without any smells, sights, no wind. It's just a, a senseless thing in a skull. And yet somehow it lives in a painted, smelly world <laughs> that is beautiful. And people who have fewer senses or who have mixed senses have slightly different realities that are created by their brains, but it doesn't change the fact that um, reality is what it is and that none of us are ever touching it.